Hello and welcome to Beautiful Literature with me, Teacher Martha. I am so glad that you could join me today. And uh, I want to hope that uh, in the past you've been able to have a look at the previous videos that uh, I have posted. And uh, because I've done uh, videos on paper one, paper two and paper three, I'm hoping that by now you are comfortable, you almost, you, you have an idea of what is expected of you when it comes to any of those three papers. Of course, in the future, we'll be looking at the details of each one of them. But before we do that, I want us to venture into the set book, that is the Fathers of Nations. And uh, for some time, we'll be dealing with that. And I would want us to look at what is this book about? Let's appreciate it. Let's have a look at it. Let's enjoy it. And I want to invite you to the walk this journey with me as far as this text is concerned. I know it's a new book and uh, some of us may be hearing it for the first time. I am hoping that each one of us have had a time to read it because reading it for yourself is important for you to experience it yourself. You'll be able to appreciate the things I'm talking about right now. And therefore, I want to encourage you, if you haven't read, take some time and read it through. And if you haven't read, it's still okay because we'll be looking at it chapter by chapter. And I'm hoping that along the way, even before we go very far, you'll have found time to go through, at least read, so that we can read together. But before we go into the chapters, I would want, it's important for us to understand what is the text about by looking at the cover and looking at the titles and probably also look at the setting. And that is what I would want to do in this video before we go into the chapters. And therefore, this is how the text looks like. It's the Fathers of Nations. That is the title. And it is written by Paul B. Vita. And uh, if you look at this book, it has... Um, it has a diagram, it has something that on the cover, and uh, it is important when you start doing an analysis of a book for you to be able to look at it from the beginning, even the cover itself. Because when an author is coming up with the title of a book, when the author is coming up with the, the, the cover design, it is with a purpose. You don't just wake up and decide that you will draw trees or you draw people walking on the roadside for nothing. And so it is for a reason that we are having what we are having. So let me begin with what we see on the, 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 the cover. And that is this diagram that is there. Now, when you look at this diagram, you realize that we are having a document that looks like it's well bound. It is well presented, even with the, with the, with the band that is uh, wrapped around it. It's, it's not just any piece of full scaps that are somewhere or some printing papers. It seems it's a document that is well prepared if you look at even the cover. Now, when, when now the other extra thing that what that kind of hits our, our, our eyes, when you see it's a stamp, it's already been stamped and the stamp reads approved. Then on top of that, we also have another st a, a, a physical stamp, which should have been the one stamping that document. And unfortunately, or I don't know how to interpret that, it is written rejected. So the stamp itself reads rejected, but what has been stamped after the stamping is um, the wordings read approved. And uh, I don't know what that, what that means to you. Do, do, does it, does it, even before you have read the book, the first time you see that, what comes to your mind? What questions run in your mind when you see something like that? And uh, probably it's important, even as we read the, through the book, for us to ask ourselves, we may not answer some of those questions right now because I'd want you to engage. I'd want you to just uh, walk with me and engage and let's engage even in our WhatsApp group and our um, on the comment section. When you see one, the, the very document, the very um, gadget that was supposed to stamp, it's written rejected, but what has been stamped after the stamping it reads approved what does that mean somehow from where i sit it shows some inconsistencies it is not consistent we expect an approved uh, stamp to come from an approved uh, physical stamp and so therefore when we see rejected and approved on the same page on the same front it means there is inconsistencies that are in this uh this text you'll see there is a bit of mistrust because how do we trust this which is which is it approved or is it rejected and also it shows there is some some things that are not clear it's uncertain there is a lot of uncertainty that is going on in this text and so therefore we expect that even as we read this text there are some discussions we need to have concerning some inconsistencies that are there concerning some underhand that is going on in this text because by the end of the day well how did we end up with an approved and rejected on the same page and so um i, I invite you that even as we read on try to pick 
on this document which document is this we are talking about why the document why not another book why because this doesn't look like a book it looks like a document and uh, why not something else why not a newspaper it is a document when we talk about the documents what are we talking about and of course i'm sure if you have read you understand what this text is about. It's about two documents, one called Way Omega and Path Alpha. And I'm sure as we read on, we'll be able to ask ourselves, what is Way Omega? What is Path Alpha? Which one is better? Which one is more important? Which one is for who? Who is against what? Which one? And so this document, therefore, this uh, image on the front page, therefore communicates that we're talking about documents and we're talking about a document that has been approved and another that has been rejected. And we want to ask ourselves, who has approved what? Who has rejected what? And why would anyone approve something and why would the other one reject something? I hope that is clear to you. Now, let's go into the, the title. The title is Fathers of Nations. Fathers of Nations, it's a very, very um, important title that stands out because we all know what it means to be fathers. I mean, fathers mean what? It's not, it's not, it's not a vocabulary. It's a common word that we use. And the, the author did not talk about the mothers of nations or the sisters of nations or brothers of nations. He chose fathers. And why choose fathers? Because he didn't just choose fathers for the sake of it. And when you hear about fathers of nations, even fathers in every family, fathers in a society, fathers in a, in a family, in, a, in an extended family, we know what the roles of the fathers are. We expect a father to be caring. We expect a father to be loving. We expect a father to be firm. We expect a father to be very, you know, a leader, someone who will protect the family, someone who will provide and just show us the way. And we know that as a father is present, then we know that we are good to go. If you have a present father, if you have a responsible father, I mean, a father figure is so critical in the life of any society, in the life of every family, in the life of, life of every child, even the life of every wife and husband and all that. When you know your father is present, then you're good to go. And so when you talk about fathers of nations, we are saying that it's, it's, another, it's another term that maybe would be referred to talk about the heads of state or presidents and so on. But the author did not use the heads of state. He did not use the presidents. He used the word fathers deliberately. And therefore, we want to ask ourselves in this text, looking at the issues and the, the storyline, how it goes, do we see fathers in this text? Do we see people who are protective? Do we see presidents who are leading us in the way that would want them to lead us? Do we see fathers who will do everything and show a sense of responsibility? Do we see heads of state who are careful to make sure that the people who put them in the seat of power are taken care of, they are loved, they are provided for, they have every opportunity that they need as a people? And so that is the question we need to ask ourselves. And maybe at this point I would want to say if you have no read the book just to let you know that this is far from the truth it is not anywhere close the people that have been presented in this text the leaders that have been presented in this text are nothing too close to being fathers actually they are the complete opposite of being fathers and therefore we can comfortably say that the author that is paul b Vita, has decided to use fathers of nations satirically you know he has used satire to describe, to, I mean, in, 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 uh, in, in this title, Fathers of Nation. And maybe I'm hoping that we are all comfortable with the meaning of the word satire. Because satire is the use of humor, irony, exaggeration, to ridicule or to expose or to criticize people's stupid or evil behavior. When people are, are doing something that is off and you want to criticize that, you want to condemn that, you want to make fun of that, you want to really just bring it to the fore that it is not okay what you're doing, you're making someone to look ridiculous because of and embarrass them and discredit them, therefore what you do, you use satire. You are not letting things slide. You are making sure that you highlight them, that what you're doing is not okay. How you are talking, how you are responding to issues is not okay. So for you to do that, and sometimes by use of, you know, just a very hidden way, but using using a humor, it's a, you, you are raising it in a very wise way, we call it satire. And so the author has used satire in this case, has used that he's ridiculing the presidents. He's making, he's criticizing, he's condemning, he's actually exposing the the, the 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 father figures that we have in our society in the names of heads of state. So as you look at this text, I would want you to manage your expectations. Do not think that you will find all very wonderful people, very wonderful heads of state, very wonderful you know leaders who will take care of his own people. After 
to roll their fathers. Let us let me tell you from the beginning that the fathers of nation has been used to criticize, actually just to mock and to ridicule the heads of state and the leaders that have been found in this book. And as we carry on, I would want you to keep asking yourself, and maybe that's a question I would want you to keep answering. Does this father of nations reflect through the text? How relevant is it? Has it been uh, used appropriately? Do you see that satire? Do you see do you see the presidents and the leaders, not just presidents, but even the leaders involved, do you see them behaving in such a way that it's not according to the expectation? And so therefore, basically, when you're talking about the title, that is it. I am hoping that you're able to get that. And maybe just to highlight on that, I would want you to just read something on page 25 on page 25, where Professor Kimani is uh, talking to the daughter and uh, they are having some time out, they are doing ice cream. And uh, he's explaining to the daughter about uh, how things have changed in Africa and how the members of parliament, by the time he was employed as a senior lecturer, the members of parliament were actually earning less than the lecturers, but soon, uh, later, uh, the members of parliament amended the laws and put that in the constitution and increased their salaries. By the end of the day, they actually earn a hundred times. I don't know how realistic that is. I don't know that he was exaggerating. And uh, that is on page 24, 23, he says, now each MP rakes in a hundred times, repeat, a hundred times the income of a a professor makes. It gets worse. Earnings by professors still consist of salaries which are taxable, whereas earnings by MPs are no longer deemed salaries and have long ceased to be taxable. Both the rise in the income by MPs and exemption of that income from taxation came with a coup. And now, um, he, it's that's the, the 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 background of that discussion, and so he goes on to say that is on page twenty five is what I wanted to read for you. Even as you talk about the fathers of nations, he says um. That then listen to me. New parliaments are just like the old. No, now Tony is asking. What if those bad uh, MPs, when they leave, can we get the new ones who are good, who are behaved? And he says, no, the old ones, when they come in, they behave like the new. The, the, the new ones come in and behave like the old one. He says, then listen to me. New parliaments are just like the old. No, they are more like the old. They raise their salaries more than the old than than did the old long and sh the long and short of it, Tony, is that nothing has really changed. Change in Africa has only replaced tyranny by presidents with tyranny by MPs. He paused to think. Then he resumed. Come to think of COVID, the French have always had it right. They say the more things change, the more they stay the same. Actually, we have had it right all along as well. We say, msitumpia nyani wale wale. So when you look at that discussion between uh, Professor Kemani and the daughter, he's actually explaining where we are as a country, where we are as African country the, in Africa. And we are saying, actually, he uses the MPs to de demonstrate how these fathers, because even the MPs are also fathers in their own right, they are leaders in their own right, how they have decided to have a coup and make it legal. You know, this, he says the soldiers, when the soldiers and the army want to decide to have a coup, they, it's illegal because really it's not in the law. But the MPs, they have all it takes. They change the law, they make it legal. And so they have, there's nothing you can do. And the new ones that come after the old ones, they actually raise their salaries more. And he says, so therefore, the tyranny, and you know the meaning of that tyranny? Tyranny means an oppressive and cruel government. Leaders who are just very bad. Presidents who, leaders who will not, will take advantage of other people and not be able to protect them. And so he says that the tyranny by presidents was replaced by tyranny with tyranny by MPs. And so ideally, when you're talking about the father of nations, we realize that this is not a very interesting situation for the people in Africa. They are being harassed. They are being uh, misused. The resources are being misused. There is misuse of power. If you look at the text on, you will see brutality, especially when you talk, listen to Com Com Comrade Melusi talks about how his, uh, the political situation. We'll look at that later. When you look at the corruption, when you look at tribalism, when you look at the overstaying, the presidents who have overstayed like um what is this the name of this president bongaura who has been in power for so long and so those are really the fathers we are talking about and they have nothing close to being a father so when you look at this text therefore we are saying that this text is satirical and finally as i finish up the setting of this text the setting of this text is in africa
it is not in Kenya only because when you look at this uh, uh, this um the characters involved and the settings, the, the situations we have been taken to East Africa, that is in Kenya, that is uh, Professor Kemani. Uh, we are told about the family and uh, Asia and his family and uh, the MP that is newborn Walombo, that is in East Africa. Then we have Comrade Melusi in South Africa, I mean in Zimbabwe, and what happens uh, there and the, the things that go on in his country, politically, his family and so on. Then we have uh, Saif Tahir, in North Africa and uh, the engineer and what happens there and his his issues as an engineer and his social life and so on. Then we have Abiola um, Afolabi and uh, that is in West Africa and we have Chiamaka, uh, the, the pastor that is in Bado in West Africa. We also have uh, Longway who is in South Africa. So ideally this whole text is not just in one pol uh, particular place. The setting is all over Africa, central, west, east, south, all that. And so when you're talking about the setting, we're saying the setting is in Africa. And of course the much of it is happening in Gambia where the, the, the summit is going on. And so those three things, the title, the relevant, I mean the, the relevance of the title, the cover of the book and the setting, I think, we are clear on that. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope now we understand. In the next one, we'll be looking at chapter one and on. You're most welcome in the next one. Thank you.